200 miles south of the Australian mainland is the island state of Tasmania, set like a scenic tapestry in the Southern Ocean. Sheltered bays and peaceful rivers, fast falling mountain streams, and the broad sweep of blue water and brown plains, all are woven into a pattern of beauty and color. The capital of the island, Hobart, is a gracious city, peaceful and quietly moving. It lies at the edge of the sea by the foot of Mount Wellington. Its homes, its churches, its old stone buildings rest easily between the two, dreaming in the mellow southern sunshine. Up to the range's long blue border stretch the brown and quiet fields. Sunlight freckles leafy pathways. Sunlight warms the sloping hills. And over the pastures, sheep move slowly over the warmth of the sloping hills. Like silver threads shining through the pattern of Tasmania's tapestry, streams wind down from the mountains to the sea. And over them stand the old stone bridges, built and carved a century ago by the first white men who came to the island. early settlers planted and cultivated the fields and built their homes, bringing to their task a deep sense of religion and family loyalty. In the brilliant green of the hop fields, is a lasting memory of England and the fields from which these settlers came. Beyond the fields, the mountains lie, thrusting blue-clad shoulders to the sky. Proud and imperishable, their age-old grandeur suffers men to look and love, but not to conquer. In the shadow of the mountains are the little towns, serving the pastoral areas of the valleys and the coastal plains. These towns are rich in colonial history, old architecture and old ornament, fragments of a gracious past. Inland, towards the center of the island, the colors and the contours change as the roads climb into the mountains. Here, the rivers of Tasmania run fast, down the mountains from the lakes where they have their source. Lakes that stretch their arms deep into the high center of the island, brilliant and glittering in the clear mountain air.
the lakes bring fishermen to match their skill against the cunning of the trout. And the challenge of the high mountains brings the bushwalkers to find serenity and high adventure in the uplands. Industry too has its part in the pattern of Tasmania's tapestry and lakes and rivers provide the water power for the island's great hydroelectric system. On the rugged west coast of the island, the pattern changes. In the area around Mount Lyle and Queenstown, great piles of naked rock dominate the landscape, fierce and vivid in their colouring. Even the streams seem to trickle grudgingly through the sterile earth. Copper is mined here, and the hills are left denuded and bare. Queenstown itself stands in a space carved out of the mountainside. It is not a pretty town, nor a gracious one, but has a character of its own to match the rugged landscape that it serves. South again to the gentle countryside of the Derwent Valley, where in the calm waters of the hatchery at Plenty, the trout which stock Tasmania's rivers and streams are bred. From here they go to the lakes and streams to provide sport for anglers. Every year, a unique natural phenomenon known as the Shannon Rise brings fishermen from all over the world to Maina Dam on the Shannon River. When the warm weather comes to the highlands, millions of caddis flies are hatched out and swarm along the river. For the trout, there is food for the taking as the flies cover the water and the riverbank like a living carpet. This is the Shannon Rise. True to the ethics of their sport, the fishermen use artificial flies to lure fish already overfed. But even then, it doesn't take long to get the day's catch. And the day's fishing done, it's home again across the water, following one of the many lovely threads that run through Tasmania's scenic tapestries.